It's my pleasure now to introduce our final speaker for this evening, Dr. Jan uh, Hendrik Poles. He's a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology at McMaster University. During his PhD, he visited the California Institute of Technology, where he collaborated with NASA on novel thermoelectric materials. Jan studies Turkish. Well, he knows at least enough Turkish so that he can get a larger portion size at his favorite Turkish restaurant. Over to you, Jan. Thank you for the kind introduction, Joe. As Joe said, my name is Dr. Jan Hendrik Pulse, and today I will speak about thermic materials. Thermic materials can play a significant role in our fight against global climate change. However, they are currently not often applied um, in our daily life. Here, I've explained what holds them back and how to change it. If you have been recently at a gas station to fill the tank of your car, you might have been surprised by the high gas prices. And we can be certain that these prices are not the tip of the iceberg. But do you know that we use only a fraction of the gasoline for the movement of the car? Most gasoline is wasted as heat. This means we spend 50 cents for the actual purpose of the gasoline to transport us from A to B. And the rest is used to heat up our planet. This contributes to the rise in global temperature, which is increasing for more than 100 years. In addition to the global temperature, our energy demand keeps rising. We have a problem. We need to produce more electricity and simultaneously reduce the amount of heat. This is a challenge which we cannot take alone, but no worries, help is on its way. Semic materials can recover waste heat and convert it back to electricity. This will reduce our global temperature and also improve our energy household. Pretty good, huh? Semic materials are based on the Seebeck effect, which is named after the German physicist Thomas Johann Seebeck. He observed when you heat up one end of two dissimilar, dissimilar metals, here copper and bismuth, by keeping the other at room temperature, you would generate a magnetic field. Later, it was found that the magnetic field was caused by an electric current. So if you heat up the other side, the magnetic field will switch as the electric current moves in the opposite direction. After the discovery, several applications were developed in which the heat of gas burners were converted to electricity. However, wide scale applications were limited by the low efficiency of metals. In 1929, the Russian physicist Abraham Yoffe revolutionized electricity. He found that semiconductors are much better semiconductor materials. The efficiency improved from 0.1% for metals to about 4% for semiconductors. This improvement led to the first wide range application in the 40s. The Russian lab, in which the heat of a kerosene lamp is converted to electricity to power radio. This invention provided the three most essentials for a cold Russian winter night, heat, light, and some good old Tchaikovsky. Nowadays, we have a wide range of semiconductor applications. Chevrolet used semiconductor um, semi materials in the suburbans to convert part of the lost energy back to electricity to power the electronics in the car. Semiconductor semi materials are also important to generate energy in space mission. This is a radioisotope semiconductor generator in which the heat of radioactive decaying materials is converted to electricity. This generator is, for example, on board of the Voyager 2, which has passed the edge of our, our solar system. You might also recognize this generator from the movie The Martian, in which Matt Damon's character used the heat of the generator to survive on Mars. You're welcome, Matt Damon. Despite this promise, wide-scale applications are still limited by the low efficiency. But what holds them back? Semiconductor materials require a high Seebeck effect to convert a temperature difference to a voltage and a high electron conduction to convert voltage to an, to an electric current. To maintain the temperature difference, the conduction of heat has to be minimized. This unique com combination of properties is comparable to Goldilocks, where she was looking for a perfect bowl of porridge. The electric properties can be separated in three re regimes. Metals, which conduct electricity, insulators, which don't conduct electricity, 
and semiconductors, which have electrical properties between them. The Seebeck effect decreases from insulators to metals, while the electron conduction shows the opposite trend. If we, can, if we combine both, we get information about the semiconductor efficiency. Insulators have a too low electron conduction, and metals have a too low Seebeck effect. However, the optimum semiconductor efficiency can be, find, can be found in semiconductors, which are like pizza. Seriously, who would prefer a bowl of porridge over pizza? The conduction of heat in semiconductors, on the other hand, can range from very, very high, like diamond, to very, very low, like glass. Therefore, semiconductor materials require the electric properties of semiconductors and the heat conduction of glass. With this insight, um, the semiconductor efficiency has nearly doubled over the last 20 years. However, to make the final step for wide-scale application, it's like searching for a needle in a haystack, except the needle is very, very tiny and the haystack is enormous. To accelerate the search, we can apply quantum calculations. Similar as a metal detector can zero in on the needle in the haystack, quantum calculations can speed up the discovery of semiconductor materials. But instead of using just one metal detector, Quantum calculations can be, per, can be per, performed on many computers, increasing the speed of the discovery. Quantum um, calculations are based on quantum mechanical equations. With these insights, we can predict new materials and also their corresponding properties. And we can use these insights also to find the optimum semiconductor efficiency, which can be used to guide experimental studies. My colleagues and I have applied quantum calculations to reveal, to reveal more than 500 new semiconductor materials. In our preliminary experimental studies, we found some of the predicted semiconductor materials have actually high efficiency, but further investigation are still required. I would like to thank the McCall McBain Foundation and also Joe and Connie, McMaster University, and also you for listening. And if you are interested to read more about this, you can read my op-ed, which was recently published in the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jan. Uh, so again, we're getting um, quite a few questions in from uh, the audience. Um, do you think thermoelectric materials can be the answer to reducing our use of fossil fuels? No. So silence. Now I will expand it a little bit more. So I don't think that semiconductor materials is the answer. I think it will be one of the answers because we have to diversify our energy generation. So we can use semiconductor materials, we can use solar cells, wind power, hydropower, or we can even combine it. So we can, for example, at the moment, we can combine solar cells with thermoelectrics because some solar cells work when you shine um, the, the, sun, the sun is shining on them and the solar cells will heat up and the heat will then convert it back to electricity by semiconductor materials. So I would say semiconductor will be one of the solution, but not the only one solution. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jan. Do you think that warning labels on gas station pumps would help consumers better understand the risks associated with fossil fuel use? Actually, that's a good question. And it, I haven't thought about this too much, but I think this is a good idea to put at least a sticker on it. It works for many things. For example, for LEDs, they put a sticker about how much you can save when you change from a glass bulb, uh, from a light bulb to, a, to an LED. So when you make a sticker about um, the gas stations, I think it would be helpful um, to um, get the attention about fossil fuels, how much we actually wasted and also about um, the transition to electri electric cars. But then again, electric cars are good and bad, so I should not say so much about electric cars at the moment. Awesome, thank you. Um, and our final question of the evening um, is, is there an optimal material for the Seebeck effect, um, which is similar to maybe the optimal material for the uh, Peltier, Peltier effect? Peltier, yeah. This is a very good question. So the Peltier effect is actually the opposite effect. This means you use an electric current to produce a temperature difference. 
you use it, for example, in electric fridges, or I think some of you have electric cool boxes at home. One thing is very funny, you can actually change um, the wires. And so instead of cooling, it will actually heat up. And the Petit effect is related to the Seebeck effect by the temperature. So when you increase the Seebeck effect, you also increase the Petit effect. They are proportional to each other. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you.